Welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. I'm so glad that you're joining me for these messages. I, it just brings me so much joy to read your cards. Speaking of, um, my calendar is now open for personal readings. The link for that is in the description below. Of course, anything you could ever want to know about this reading is going to be in the description below. Um, and honestly, that's really all I have. I'm not even sure what decks we're going to be using yet. I just started getting that like poking feeling last night to start putting out messages again. So that's what we're going to do. And this is probably the quickest intro I've ever done, but let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, we have the four, six, and I'm laughing because there's there's actually been a, a couple people that have been waiting for this one or watching out, I should say, watching out for this one. And of course, <laughs> we even talked about like, of course, um, it would be the last one <laughs> for that reason. It would be the last one to go. So shout out to you four sixes one of them being my sister let's see what is the message for our four sixes no pressure <laughs> we have gratitude and thanks beautiful i love this card I love all of the cards <laughs> that have come out, but there's so much in this card. And really my eye keeps going to these butterflies. And since they are actually butterflies, that would mean that the metamorphosis has happened or that is a process that you have been in and are getting ready to come out of. And it is a lot about giving thanks and gratitude to the caterpillar, right? <laughs> because, you know, starting out as a caterpillar and then cocooning yourself, turning to goo, so that you can literally come out as this beautiful butterfly. You know, it's like remembering where you came from. I love all the flowers. Like this has like a very, spring vibe to it with these tulips and you know like i'm in colorado and the tulips are already coming out of the ground and it's literally snowing outside right now <laughs> so it's almost and it's always you know like the tulips are always the first thing to pop out of the ground anyway it's like being so excited to get going you know, like in the process of winter and, you know, like really the whole summer almost because they, they, I feel like they're like done by May-ish. First one's in, first one's out. <laughs> so it says, let me hold this up so you can, you can look at the card I will read. It is easy to take the good things for granted, especially at times when the bad stuff is overwhelming. But those are the moments when it is the most important to pause and give thanks for what you do have instead of dwelling on what you don't. If you are dealing with a health issue, focus on the parts of your body that work correctly or thank the ones for the issue with the issues for doing the best they can under the circumstances. Don't have enough money? Be grateful for what you do have and especially give thanks to to the people who are there for you in both good times and bad. Scientific studies have proven that an attitude of gratitude is actually healthy, but you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> Sometimes we just, we all just need a little reminder to be grateful and say thank you. This is also like very receptive to like almost allowing things to unfold. They have their their eyes closed. They have their arms out. And to me, it, it has this energy of, like I said, like accepting, receiving, surrendering even. All right, we 
just need six tarot cards for our four sixes. I also recognize that <laughs> just kind of went right into right into things. Um, I usually have like a blurb or, you know, some sort of content to go over your profile. And this time when I started these videos, I didn't have that ready to go. <laughs> so when I recognized that I went out on Google and started looking around and there is a lot of great information out there. Just, you know, nothing was really hitting the spot. So I just am trusting that, um, it's not a big part of the message this time around. And I have some good resources for next time. But I did just want to go over the profile lines just briefly. And then, of course, we'll get the tarot cards out. So that fourth line is the opportunist line. That's all about community, friendships, networking, familiarity, like your best opportunities are going to be found within your network, within your community. And that doesn't necessarily mean like the, the people that you directly know. It could be word of mouth. So it's just kind of putting the word out to your friends, to your network that you're looking for a specific thing. And no doubt, it'll come back. <laughs> it'll find its way to you. Also, your greatest impact is going to be on those people who are familiar with you. And familiarity, it's like, how long is somebody a stranger? Not very. <laughs> and so familiarity literally just means that people have even just seen your face before or they're familiar-ish with you. I think there's an example um, it might be in the definitive book of human design talking about this. And it just says that, like, as an example, if you were if you were invited to give a speech or a talk somewhere, instead of showing up on the stage or walking out in front of people as a complete stranger, um, mingle in the lobby a little bit. You know, I mean, it doesn't even necessarily have to be like, you know, stopping and talking to everybody, shaking every single person's hand. But it's just, you know, so as when you go up on the stage or you get in front of people, they're like, oh, I have that familiarity with them already because I just saw them out in the lobby or um, whatever. I saw them on social media or, you know, whatever. Whereas, you know, people with the fifth line their greatest impact is going to be with strangers, right? Like familiarity breeds content with fifth lines, whereas with fourth lines, familiarity like, you know, strengthens that connection and bond and it just almost kind of, you know, like spreads, which is great. And with that fourth line, you kind of have this natural ability to build a network, to have acquaintances, meet people, even if you don't think that you do that well. And then that sixth line is the role model line, and that has three stages. So from the time that you're born until the, about 30 years old around your Saturn return, um, you are operating as a four, three. And the third line is all about experimentation, it's trial and error. It's making and breaking bonds. It's bumping up against life, life bumping up against you. And it probably has a lot to do with your friends, with your community, with your relationships, since it's on the design side and the fourth line is on the, the personality or the conscious side. So you could have had, you know, experiences with friends, with relationships, romantic or otherwise with business, and they might have fit, felt a bit like a shit show because all of that is wisdom. And that's part of the six line role model 
And what better way to gain wisdom than actually going through the experience yourself? But that also means that with six lines, it could be, it could have been a bit chaotic, dismantling, traumatic even. So then after the age of 30, it's called going up on the roof. And when you're on the roof from between 30 to about 50-ish, that's where you start unpacking those experiences. That's where you start even healing, right? Because you're going through the experiences that you had, determining what stays, what goes, what are the lessons of those experiences, what didn't work, what did work. You have to know what didn't work in order to discover what does work, right? That's kind of the gift that comes with the third line even if sometimes it doesn't feel that way. But again, like that's how you gain wisdom was, you know, having the experiences, knowing what doesn't work, knowing what does work. That's even a time where, you know, you're building your career, you're deciding on family, you're really even kind of honing in on your network, on your friend group, on your family, chosen or biological. Therapy could be a thing that you go through when you're on the roof. And then after the age of like 50-ish, you come off of the roof truly embodying that role model, right? And it's literally a matter of simply existing. <laughs> like, you know, people look at you and they're like, wow, how did you even get to have this life? How did you get to be this person? That you, how can you express yourself so authentically? And you're like, oh my God, let me tell you, right? That's where that wisdom starts pouring out. Let me tell you how I came to be who I am today, right? Like, let me help you. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, you don't have to necessarily specifically be standing up on a stage. You can, if that's what you want, absolutely. Is there anything else I want to say about that but yeah I mean you know it doesn't have to be you know like being a motivational speaker or you know <laughs> it like I said it certainly can be if that's what you feel called to but it, it could also be um, managing something right like through work it could be parenting it could be just simply knowing yourself deeply and honoring yourself by living authentically to your to the beat of your own drum and that's it you know doing whatever you're doing whatever makes you happy following your strategy and authority because that is important your strategy and authority is going to help you enter into the correct experiences and your profile is how you interact with the energy of those experiences i'm like wasn't there a card that i come on <laughs> there it is i'm like i knew there was is that the only one So we have the four of pentacles, we need five more. Four of wands, justice. <laughs> I, I just heard in my head, if you think you're gonna get away with not having a community, you've got another thing coming. That's funny. People can be so exhausting though, huh? <laughs> it's okay to take breaks. Star card. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, they came out in the reverse. Three of Swords, okay. <laughs> I am just 
clearly having a moment over here. Okay. All right. This is <sighs> so good. No wonder why you guys went last. <laughs> the sun is out and it's snowing. Again, that happened a couple days ago. I just, I think that's so funny. So, okay, let's just, let's just get into it. These two cards have, you know, I mean, it looks pretty similar to me. All of the things that we talked about with gratitude and thanks. And, you know, just this energy of like returning to gratitude always, right? Which I know is, you know, I mean, it can be so much easier said than done, said than done. And also to like this, this thing about like continuing to surrender and especially when it comes to your strategy and authority continuing to surrender, continuing to trust. I mean, literally for you guys, like the right people will come along. But you also have to put yourself around, you know, like the opportunity, literally, right? The fourth line is the opportunist line. You literally have to like put yourself around people in order for those opportunities to show up and then again like i said right like the best opportunities are going to be found within your your network okay so we start with the four of pentacles and the four of pentacles is about holding on too tight pentacles have to do with our money it's how we get it how we spend it how we save it it's also earth so being grounded but like being grounded to the point of not moving <laughs> You know, like there is a difference between, you know, staying grounded in the sense of not having your head completely in the clouds to where it's like the the negative side of delusion, but not being so grounded that you're literally not moving. And it's interesting, right? Because in this card, it's like at first glance, we can, you know, it almost looks like this person is imprisoned in some capacity. However, like they're on the outside of this, whatever, you know, prison, jail, dungeon, whatever. So they're not trapped. The, there is this window that's open. This cat is like, hey, what's going on outside? Well, I don't know because we're inside. Why, why are we inside? It's guarding something too close. Like if there is something that is you know, like within you, there's something that that you feel a connection to, you know, and maybe it's something that you feel is bigger than yourself. This is keeping that to yourself, like literally keeping it under lock and key instead of sharing it with others, which kind of goes against your profile. So <laughs> that's probably why it feels so uncomfortable and it has felt uncomfortable no doubt it could even be of course you know like with it being pentacles it could be a concern about having enough money so it's like not wanting to spend the money that you have now because well what what if what if it doesn't get replenished like what if i don't make any money but it's also not in doing that, you're not enriching yourself. <laughs> you know, like if there are courses or programs or something, you know, that would cost money, but it would allow you to grow and move closer to that thing, you're like preventing yourself from doing that. And then we have it paired with the star card this is a card of Aquarius. There doesn't have to be an Aquarius involved, just saying. Also, you know, Pluto is moving into Aquarius this week, actually. I think it's only going to be there briefly, though, and then it's going to retrograde back into uh, Capricorn for a while. It won't fully go into Aquarius until next year. 
and then it'll be there for the next 20 years. So this could be something that is going to unfold in the next 20 years, which I know sounds like a really, like a really long time, but I'm just going to say that because this card came out, but the star card is literally trust. It is gratitude. It is trusting the process. There's a faith and hope aspect that goes along with the star card. I see the star card as being that literal space between where we manifest in the 5D and where we are in the 3D. And it's the coming together of those things, pulling it down from the 5D into the 3D. But you know, if you're manifesting it, that means that it's available. By manifesting it, by starting that process, right, then you start making decisions to start heading in that direction, right? Like you start taking actionable steps towards that manifestation. And that's how these two things come together. But again, right, you like it's it's literally trusting the process. It's having faith <laughs> that what you are creating in the 5D is going to manifest in the 3D. And it will. This even has a vibe of this gratitude and thanks card too, a bit. And then we have the four of wands. And that's I you know, like why I was kind of laughing a bit before. And, you know, that message came through about like, if you think you're going to get away with not <laughs> communing with people, then you have another thing coming. Because look at the difference between the four of pentacles and the four of wands. This is being by yourself closed off, you know, like, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with this if it's, you know, practical and, you know, like working on something. Because again, with it being pentacles and also this is the 3D. This is the physical 3D that I was talking about in the star card. So, you know, balancing the two here. It's fine if you want to like work on a project by yourself, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a group prod a group project all the time, right? But the four of wands is about community. It's about unity and celebration, clearly. Wands have to do with action, communication, it's our desires, it's our passions. It's even information, whether you're giving information or receiving it. And this would be sharing your gift with other people. And also the Four of Wands talks about, you know, there is this celebration going on because the steps that you have taken, the actions that you've taken, have gotten you to a point of security and like having a firm foundation. So it's kind of like, you know, if you if you trust, <laughs> return to gratitude, right? Instead of being in fear or lack or scarcity, returning to gratitude, this is possible. And it would also even heal if you have a wound regarding other people or groups of people or community or something along those lines. Because we have the Three of Swords in the reverse. Upright, the Three of Swords talks about rejection, heartbreak, disappointment, swords having to do with our thoughts. So... It's the stories that we attach to those experiences. That's where our ego comes from, is based on the stories that we attach to experiences generally in our childhood. And for you guys, it would be during that first stage, from the time you were born until about 30-ish. I mean, you know, I, of course, like even after that, but it's more prominent the first 30 years. So in the reverse, 
there would be a release of that. There would even maybe be like an acceptance of it. It's like not allowing those experiences to control your outlook on the opportunist line. It really is recognizing that the experiences that you had in relationship, in community, in your family, in your jobs, you know, I mean, anything dealing with other people, right? <laughs> with the opportunist line. It really is accepting that those experiences were necessary. And I want to, you know, be sensitive when I use that word necessary. Because there has been some terrible shit that has happened to, to people. And I'm, I'm not blaming you for those experiences. But again, with that third line, it's like, you know, you have to go through the experience in order to understand the good and the bad of it. And we sometimes get stuck in the bad. Because like I said, people can be exhausting. <laughs> But also, if you can accept that, and if anybody can accept that, it would be you guys, then it also like helps you build like a protection around yourself. Like you don't have to give your energy away to everybody or just anybody, right? And then we have the justice card, which is Libra. It's interesting how much air we have out here. The <laughs> Let me just back up a little bit. That's air. All of these are air. That's air. <laughs> so, a lot of a lot of mental stuff going on. And in the realm of human design, we don't make decisions from our minds because the mind is the pressure center. So it's like, you know, these regardless of if it's defined or not. You know, like a thought, an idea, something drops into our consciousness and we immediately feel like we need to do something with it instead of letting that trickle down into our body, go through, you know, the process of our strategy and authority, which again is importante and deciding if that's something that we need to act on now or if we file it away. Or if it's not even for us, like maybe it's for somebody else, you know, maybe just by talking about it out loud to somebody else, it's almost like you trigger something in them. So it wasn't even necessarily yours to do anything with, but you would know that, <laughs> um, you know, if it went through your strategy and authority. So I just want to say that because we have a lot of mind stuff out here and it's one thing to you know of course like consider all of the things because that's general you know i mean it's our brain that's where you know thoughts and shit come from but also you know again being sure to check in with that strategy and authority so the justice card talks about fairness it's the scales balancing there's a bit of a karmic aspect to it like what you what what you give you get back kind of getting what you deserve, good or bad. I would say this would be good <laughs> with the cards that are out here. And also too, you know, if you can see this, this person has a blindfold on, but it's not covering one eye. So it's kind of like this feeling of recognition. And, you know, with these two cats here, they still have their like paw out and they're kind of hissing at each other. But they are in balance this is the shadow side this is the light side right so just those energies within ourself this is also like very behind the scenes right i mean like they're behind a curtain and it has this like feeling of protection like if this is what you're worried about but this is what you want justice is saying that they like you are being protected this is very faded is how that feels and also like going after the thing that you want and with the four of swords in the reverse this is kind of funny because it's like you have to go out there and do it <laughs> because the four of swords upright you know clearly this person is resting 
And it does talk about rest because it's coming right after the three of swords. So you go through this part and then it's, you know, healing and rejuvenation, giving yourself, you know, time to recalibrate. And with it being in the reverse, there's no time for rest. <laughs> Or it's not the time for rest, I should say. I think that is so cool that those two cards came out together and in the reverse. And it's a progression from the three to the four. And we have three fours out here, which is, which is really cool too. And then we have the seven of swords at the bottom of the deck, followed by the devil card. This to me feels like a, almost like a firm talking to, <laughs> because I see the seven of swords as being the card of us fooling ourselves. It is about betrayal. It is about, you know, trickery, doing things in secret, tiptoeing around, right? And there's nothing that says that you need to tell anybody about what you're doing. You are not obligated to share anything with anybody if you don't want to. So saying that, but this is also a card of taking risks and it could be the risk that you're taking in private. Like, you know, maybe you don't want to tell people about it yet because you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> I want to see how it goes first. But also this is very like self sabotage -y. And that's what I mean by, you know, the card, like us fooling ourselves. This is when, you know, ego starts going crazy and starts telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't do something, why you can't do something. It's also all the lower vibes of why you should. You know, so it's like very much about staying in integrity, even going back to this gratitude and thanks. The double card is Capricorn, but it talks about obsession, the things that control us. So with these two cards coming out together, really... Be mindful of where your mind is playing tricks on you. But also, again, right, like stay in integrity and don't start playing tricks on fucking other people. <laughs> I don't think that you would by any means. This could also even be working around this, you know, figuring out a workaround for your ego or something else that like controls you. Because again, I mean, control can be anything from like addiction and that is on the spectrum from, you know, addicted to being numb or distraction to like substance or gambling or shopping. This could even be what you fear is like holding you back. Don't let it. <laughs> It's just that easy, right? No, I get it. But again, right, like returning to this gratitude and thanks card. The king of wands, kings being the highest expression of the suit, wands being about action and communication. This is creative freedom, right? Like this is very kind of entrepreneurial vibes. Out of all of the kings, this would be the one that like needs to have that creative freedom to literally explore whatever is interesting to them at the time. I love that they're like kind of showing their cat like where they're gonna go. <laughs> I kind of want to read from the book actually what that, forge ahead with determination in the pursuit of your goals. Take charge of your own destiny. Oh. Okay, that's all we needed, exactly. And I love that it's coming after these fools. The Queen of Cups, watery, cups having to do with our emotions. Queens are when we recognize the energy within ourselves. So it's about self-love, self-compassion, making sure that um, your cup is full before you start pouring into other people's cups. You're pregnant, which is about, you know, expansion. And it's almost like reproducing love. I mean, of course, if you 
are looking to get pregnant, that would be a good omen for that. If you are not, then, you know, I mean, fertility in the tarot is about fertility of opportunity, reproducing opportunity. And since it's cups, it would have something to do with how we feel and about love. Very nurturing. There's also an intuitive aspect with cups, like really being connected to your heart space and the emotional body. The page of cups is about creativity, imagination, welcoming play too, but allowing, allowing your imagination to even expand and playing with that a bit. The three of cups again with community, this is support from others. There's also a celebration aspect to it. The five of cups would be grieving. And it's interesting because there's three cups that are spilled out here. And it's coming literally right after the three of cups. So there could be people in your life right now or feelings that you have about people in your life right now this could even be healing this could be the grieving process there's a couple different generations on this card too which is so effing interesting because there's three generations on the sun card too this is fascinating <laughs> this could actually even be validating other people in some capacity and you know like making a community to where somebody in this energy would feel welcome that but like I said right there's this person seems to be the oldest in this card this one seems to be you know like between um her and her she seems to be the youngest And then on this card, this person is the oldest, they're the youngest, and they're somewhere in between. And again, with the pregnancy thing. So that's interesting. You know, I mean, it looks like they had a party that maybe nobody came to. Maybe it didn't go the way that they thought. Because there's still these two cups here. But they're focused on these three cups that, that are spilled out over here. So it is also, you know, grieving what, what hasn't worked, what doesn't feel good, but also remembering that there's still these two cups back here. And the two of cups talks about shared values. And then the sun card is like literally everything good. And especially with the sun card coming out after the five of cups, whatever this is, there it's like it's going out or it didn't work so that the sun card could that's joy it's bliss recreation regeneration like we literally cannot live without the sun and also with the sun being back there and the star here there's something being illuminated it could even be being in the spotlight of course with the the star card and again you know i, I don't want you to think that like you know every Every six line is going to be, you know, in the spotlight, if that's not even something that you even care about. But it is like being authentic and like showing up and being seen. What is that? Brene Brown says, I won't shrink. I won't puff up. I'll just show up and be seen. That's it. I'm leaving it there. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. Bye.